Hi, I'm Padma Shri Warrior. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Cisco. I've been at Cisco for about two years now, and I want to share with you my perspective on Cisco's innovation. I think Cisco actually leverages innovation in all phases, everything from ideas that come up internally, how do we fund them, how do we resource them, how do we build them into big businesses, telepresence being the first a primary example of that. The second is to leverage ideas that come up from the outside. Um, Smart Grid, for example, came up through a process that we call iZone and iPrize, um, which is now a major initiative of ours, and we are now combining the idea that came up from outside the company and making it a big business by investing Cisco's resources on this. And also, actually, the third thing that's very interesting about Cisco is we think of innovation is going hand in hand with operational excellence. I think the two of those uh, to us mean the same thing, which is very unique um, as far as uh, how companies think about this, right? Uh, here I'd like to give you an example of my own experience. When I first started at Cisco, I had this idea that we really needed a process, an operational and a business process in how we look at adjacency. How do we measure them? How do we know which phase of maturity they're in? Are they pre-chasm, post-chasm, et cetera? And I kind of went to John with this idea that we should really put together um, a business process and some metrics to measure our adjacencies' uh, effectiveness in terms of how they're performing. John told me, okay, go get it done, um, and, and I sure did. I got together with a few other people, my peers within the company and some other folks that were interested in similar things. We formed a working group. CPAD has now become an operational process for us. We review all our adjacencies this way. We use it in many of the councils that we have up and running in the company. Next thing I want to talk to you about is uh, a vision for the future. Um, of course, I think a lot about how the future will be, um, will be uh, turning out. And as I tell people often, it's easy to make predictions. And my job is really not to make predictions. It's actually to enable the future uh, by leveraging technology. And so if you think of it that way, I think fundamentally we're at a point where over the next 10 to 15 to 20 to 25 years, we'll see some fundamental shifts in many of the verticals. You know, for instance, the automotive industry is going to look very different 25 years from today. The cars we'll drive will, will look different. The roads they will, we will drive them on will be very different. The amount of technology, the use of technology in transportation will be fundamentally different. Same thing we can say for energy grids and how power, how power will be consumed. There'll be many different forms of power. How that will be distributed will be different. Um, Cities, cities will be built differently. People will live in, in a very, hopefully in a very sustainable way. Education, healthcare, um, the internet, the role the internet plays. I think fundamentally many of the things that we have taken for granted over the last 25 years will once again be reinvented. And, and in doing so, the role of the network actually makes, um, becomes very important because the network really becomes a platform. Um, I know it sort of sounds like uh, something some, a city of Cisco would say, uh, but you know, at, the, at the heart of it really is you know, the notion of how do you connect multiple devices? How do you connect devices with people and the way people access this? And obviously the only way you can do that is to have um, not just a connectivity, Piece, but actually the applications that sit on that connectivity. And I think this is where the network has to evolve from simply being a foundation to really becoming the glue between devices and how people consume the applications on those devices.